Let's go. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome again to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync. It's the 2nd of September 2019 still. Um, I'm Alan. Pleased to see you again. Um, I've posted the link to the notes in the chat. So if you are here, please put your name on the attendees list. And uh, please also do fill out your uh, async uh, weekly update. We won't go through this in the meeting, but it, this is for everyone else to uh, read up on what you've been up to in the past week uh, at their own, in their own time. Uh, so yes, please fill out that so people know what you've been doing. Um, and we will begin by running through the, uh, we have a note ticker uh, and we have attendees. Yeah, it, we will begin by running through the initiatives. So initiatives, what are we doing? What have we doing? What have we been doing? Um, well, first of all, uh, upgrade the release process. I can talk a little to that because last week um, I sent a pull request for um, updating the release process for JS IPFS. It was based heavily on the good work that went into the pull request for uh, improving the release process for Go IPFS. So thank you, uh, thank you for that. Um, if you, uh, even if you don't want to review it, have a little read of it um, and let me know what you think. I asked Eric to do a release graphic. If you look on the right hand side of the crypt pad, he has spent many hours crafting a, a new one for JS IPFS. <laughs> Um, so thanks, Eric. Um, all right, uh, Stephen, do you have any updates for release, any release process updates? For Go, I think. Nope, nothing nope. this week. All right, uh, so that's cool. Moving on then, uh, upgrading the uh, testing infra slash process. Um, I don't have anything new here. I'm hoping that maybe this week I'll have time to look at this benchmark pull request, but I don't have anything else to add. Um, so Stephen or Jim, would you like to talk to that if you have any news? Um, not a whole lot of news. Uh, Roll Ro pushed um, some more um, uh, code, which I have to look at. I'm sort of taking the day off today, mostly. <laughs> but. Uh, um, I've been experimenting a bit with adding some instrumentation to um, to uh, pull out some more events and get some more observability into IPFS, IPFS itself, and I should, should have some interesting demos for that. Um, and rolls some code uh, for running some stuff on a Nomad cluster. Uh, I understand, so I have to look at it. So. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's all for updating the testing infra slash process for now. Uh, next up is garbage collection and pinning. Um, last was I wasn't last week because I wasn't here last week, but it was the week before I think. Might have been last week. Uh, anyway, I merged the initial implementation of garbage collection that Dirk had done for JS IPFS, um, and that will be available in the upcoming. Uh, release of J the next release of JS IPFS uh, 038. Um, and just a note to people that this is literally just the first pass implementation. It doesn't add any kind of automatic or periodic collection for GC. So if you want GC to happen, you have to explicitly call that command for it to, to even happen. So um, do not worry too much about losing data uh, when you upgrade. Um, so the next steps on that really are to um, convert it to be streaming. Like there's a possibility if you have a really, really, really large data set that, um, uh, that you might run out of memory whilst GCing, um, uh, which would be, which wouldn't be great. Um, and then and there's an issue for that. And then, like I said, there's no automatic or periodic collection for GC in JS IBFS. So that needs to be added at some point. We need an issue to be created for that. So I'll enter to get that issue created at some point. Um, cool, that's garbage collection. Uh, Gossip Sub, uh, Vashko, would you like to update us on that one? Hello, yeah, so uh, the interop PR was finally merged and uh, Alan already reviewed my PR for the JSPS integration and uh, I already addressed his review, so we are kind of uh, final tweaks away of getting it merged. 
And that's it. Cool, thank you, Vashko. I put a note there as well that we were, I think you've done this, but we in the process of kind of renaming that enable pub sub experiment flag to enable pub sub because of the fact that it's being pulled out of any experimental config elsewhere. Um, and uh, I think I suggested leaving that old, the old style one as a kind of alias for now. Um, yes, I, I, I need to add the alias thing. The, everything else is, is good. Uh, and then we can re remove it at a future date. Um, so I guess I just wanted to, to Stephen to kind of take note of that. And should I open something on the Go IPFS side of things? Or is this a bad idea in general? What do you think? Sorry, I turned up for a second. What were we saying? Uh, so there is the uh, gossip sub implementation is coming to JSIPFS and we have yep. uh, renamed uh, because it, it's basically moved out of experimental in all of the other config. We've renamed the IPFS daemon flag enable pub sub experiment to just enable pub sub without the actual experiment. Uh, does JS have, uh, okay, uh, does JavaScript have message signing yet? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, so there's only one additional issue here. Um, and that is that we've been doing some, or we're always doing some profiling of uh, gossip sub and gossip in general. And it turns out that message signing is really, really slow. Uh, but we kind of need it for security. Um, so we are looking into potentially changing the protocol to not use message signing to rely on some other way to like to duplicate messages. Let's currently rely on message signing because like, we have like the ID and then like some arbitrary like chosen number that we use to duplicate messages, but this is authenticated, so we have to sign everything to authenticate it. So you can't like DOS people. So th there are some questions about whether or not we have to go and like change some things. Now we can always just rev the protocol and say, okay, fine, it's a new thing. Maybe that's not an issue. Um, uh, it, but like, I guess on this specific topic, I wouldn't say rename uh, enable pubs of experiment to enable pubs of. I would just enable it by default if it becomes non experimental. I don't see any reason why not. Is that reasonable? Yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, we should probably have something to disable it, though. Does it do anything if you aren't using it? I think, like, I thought, like, if you don't use it, it just doesn't yeah, you're right. do anything. Yeah. Although I guess fine, you still speak the protocol, so you still accept inbound pub sub uh, like subscriptions. Um, but yeah. I, I don't know. Like I, I don't like having like tons of different flags for tons of different things when like we can just like implicitly enable it when you need it. Um, that's just my attitude on that. Right. But so uh, I don't know the details of gossip sub, but does it do anything? when you are not using it per se to pass messages to it others. Does, think about it. Like you will now receive, or sorry, the remote side will now open streams uh, to tell you the things it's, or, sorry, the, um, sorry. Yeah. Your peers open stream to tell you what they're subscribing on and they'll leave these streams open. So yes, actually it will take up some memory. Um, so that is a good point. So having the flag uh, is a good idea. Yeah, unless you want to have something where, like, if you aren't subscribed to anything, you just don't register. Like, so, like, ideally, like, if I'm not subscribed to anything, I would just, like, shut down the entire gossip subservice. Um, and then if I subscribe, I would, like, reopen it. I don't know how much, like, extra bandwidth that would take because then I have, like, a bunch of, uh, no, that's a real pain. Like, that's hard to do. No, we can't do that. It's, like, we don't currently have a good way of, like, pushing out notifications to your saying, hey, we now support this thing. Please, like, enable this listener. Um, we, we're, we're adding that support to the bit but it's not quite there yet. Yeah. Um, You're talking in terms of multi-stream select and saying that you now support this particular protocol. Yeah. So identify push is now almost a thing. It's sort of thing, but it isn't widely deployed and it has I think, some issues around like ordering of messages. Um, Does this need a follow-up meeting? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, I. Let's let's um, let's talk about it later, uh, uh, and we can come to a conclusion. Um, I didn't think it would be 
quite so problematic, but let's let's do that because we have only have so much time for this call. Mm -hmm. um, but cool, I'm glad I raised it at least. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Uh, moving on then to subdomain gateway. Lydell, are you here to give us a quick update? Uh, uh, a very quick update would be that I made another pass uh, on the RFC number one and applied suggested changes to uh, mainly uh, added uh, upgrade path. So the short, short story is uh, we will uh, add support for decoding CID v1, like decoding PRDs uh, represented as CID v1 uh, to like first release of lib 2 uh, and we'll wait either three months or until the next release happen and then we'll switch the default so that's like a migration path for uh, first adding support for cidv1 and then switching to cidv1 represented in base 32 and then we'll have like representation parity between ipfs and ipns namespaces uh, sort of for free after we implement this in ipfs so ask here uh, is to take a look if someone's interested either in this change or in RFC process, we try to bootstrap uh, with this very first RFC. Cool, thank you, Lido. Uh, all right, next up, uh, distributed signaling and Jacob is not here. Bashko, would, do you know anything about this or, uh, or shall we leave it for this week? We shall leave it for this week. I, I know he was working on it last week, but I don't know his progress. All right, okay. Uh, next up then is IPNS. Uh, so we've got Aiden and Hugo. Uh, Aiden is not here, but Hugo? Yeah, here. Hey. So the, the spec work is ongoing. We got a call scheduled for tomorrow to discuss some missing pieces. And it will be out this week, hopefully. Um, I also have a, a pull request regarding IPNS almost ready to merge. Hopefully it's running the test for the last time. Uh, and I'll, we'll start to implement the um, DNS over HTTPS for the IPFS DNS command to support uh, IPNS over DNS, which uh, will make the whole router implementation much simpler. That's it. Any questions? Oh, right. Cool, thanks for the update, Hugo. Um, uh, next up is uh, migration to multi hash keys in block store. Uh, okay, fun times. Uh, so, Adam, is Adam here? No, no, he's not. Okay. Uh, someone has put this, uh, Adam did some initial analysis in code base for parts that will be affected. Okay, interesting. Outcome is in all right. Yes, and so there's an action item for me and Stephen to have a look at that pull request uh, or issue. Sorry, um, and I need to get around to looking at his repo migration tool pull request, um, which I believe has been looked at by Dirk before and is almost ready to go. So it just needs a, a final final look over. Uh, any questions on that quickly? Okay, uh, package man Dirk isn't here today, so we'll skip over that one. Bit swap update, Stephen. Do you have bit swap updates? Oh, Dirk's made a, a an awesome issue with improvements to bit swap. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now he has uh, some. He has a, uh, a test version that he's been uh, trying out uh, that includes some of these. Well, a very hacky implementation of uh, some of these improvements. Just to start benchmarking it. Um, but yeah, that's that's the latest update there. Also, uh, next week, if you, you sorry, go on. Go ahead. Next week, if you attend the IPFS All Hands, uh, All Hands, no, the weekly, weekly IPFS call. Uh, formerly known gonna, as, huh? Yeah, formerly known as All Hands. All Hands. It's, it's always All Hands. Okay, I didn't know how many hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, Dirk's going to present uh, his 
imp these improvements uh, on the next meeting. So uh, be sure to uh, check that out because that should be really interesting, or at least I think so. <laughs> um, cool. So next up, the uh, async await refactor. Um, uh, so I put some notes here. Um, so uh, Alex is trying to land uh, adding with an async iterator. Uh, and there's a possibility that that might make JS IPFS be able to add things to it faster than Go IPFS in certain situations. For certain data types, if you run the test over and over again and pick the lowest number. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> but that still means that it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's like amazing uh, within the same order of magnitude, which is lovely. Now, Alex, the next step is we're going to pull you over to the Go team, and then you're going to undo all of that work. I'm just going to move the goalposts a little further, and it's like, ah, now Go is faster again. He's moving both goalposts. <laughs> just let us have this for a little bit. <laughs> One release. One release. <laughs> All right. Um, so aside from that, uh, I, the IPFS HTTP client has now has browser uh, PubSub in the browser, which is super good news, but um, not really relevant to async await, or is it? Because it actually uses uh, the fetch API in the browser, which is all kind of promise based. So it is a stepping stone to async await in that particular library as well. So um, that is good news. And now that that, um, that initial step has been taken, we can sort of roll that out to the other APIs that are, that are there. So that's, that's, that's cool. There's a blog post about that as well. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, so I, I had been working on this for a while, but there is a pull request to roll that out to add, adding in um, IPFS HTTP client. So um, that's kind of cool. Any quick questions on that before we move on? Prashko. Uh, do you think we will be able to get a consensus about uh, returning for our transports during this week? Because that will unblock a lot of uh, current open PRs like the, all the transports and uh, Mplex and interface connection and some more probably. Yeah, it is top of my uh, to-do next list uh, in the uh, weekly update, if you check further down the document, uh, because it's one of the things that is um, I am blocking, and I'm just about to not be here for a while. So I'm going to hopefully unblock that this week. Cool. Yes, we need to do that, because otherwise it will stop forever. Um, all right, cool. Uh, any other quick questions? No, okay. Design review proposals. I wasn't here last week. Did we have any last week that were resolved? No? Do we have any this week that anyone wants to last minute add? Okay, awesome. Okay, blockers and asks. Lytle, is your, is your RFC number one gonna end up in a design review proposal at some point? Is that the next step in that process? It's a... I think it was in one of past weeks, I think, or was it not? No, it, it, it's a Lip P2P proposal. So it's on Lip P2P team at this point. Uh, I also don't think it's that uh, controversial. This is really to discuss. Uh, it's basically just the point, does Lip P2P team say yes or do they say no? Cool, okay. Um, moving on to blockers and asks then. I've got a couple of things here uh, that I put down. There's the, I talked about the updated JS IPFS release process. Um, please read it and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and well, please read it <laughs> and give me your review. Um, I've added a couple of things from the Go. I, uh, like if you've read the Go one, then it's probably really familiar. You'll be able to, you'll be able to skim it really quickly. Um, there is a couple of things that I wanted to highlight, which is that I've added is like adding a shipping date, just so that we can give an idea, people an idea of when the, sh the thing might actually arrive. We don't have to be specific, but just saying probably this week in September or, or wherever would be useful for drive-by visitors. Um, uh, the second thing was opening up the uh, like the next release issue as soon as we've done the release um, 
just so that people can start planning. We can, well, we can give them an idea when the next one might be available. Um, just, yeah, just for that kind of, that process to start up quickly rather than waiting before until we need to start doing the steps basically. Um, and then uh, there was a question over like how JSIPFS wants to follow Semver going forwards, what we're doing, what we're doing now and a proposal for what we might want to do um, going forward. So uh, have a really quick read. It shouldn't take long. Um, there's only four files to look at. Um, my second ask is uh, I'm going to be going away for a little bit for like a month um, and the next JSIBFS release needs to uh, needs to be released uh, according to that updated JSIBFS release process document. Um, and so uh, I've linked to an issue where I've kind of described the what what kind of needs to happen, but importantly, we kind of need someone to spearhead it and uh, and and take it to the finish line, um, uh, and uh, and it would be cool to maybe I, I don't know, but maybe having like a duo of people um, uh, releasing it might be a good idea. Um, please have a look at the issue and let me know if you can think of anything that I've not covered there that you would like to know if you were doing it would be really useful. Um, uh, but yeah, check, check out the issue. Um, that's me for asks. Lido has an ask. Uh, my ask is just to check RFC 0001. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, Stephen has an ask. I will be assigning uh, or like making PRs, assigning people as the maintainers of various repos. Uh, if uh, you are willing to do this, please, or think you might be willing, please read the, the maintainers document and make sure that this is something you actually want to take on because it's non non trivial amount of work. Uh, but I think once one of my OKRs and two, this is really important so that we spread the load around and also like uh, offer people on like understanding different repos. Um, yeah, it also makes sure that things get through faster. That's the main thing, really. Cool. Um, uh, all right. Uh, Hugo has a last minute ask. Yeah, we have been having some issues with uh, the DNS tests, which in a browser specifically, because we call the, the, the DNS endpoint on the gateway. And is we are getting some weird JSON. Uh, I was wondering if anyone knows what's up, or if this is already uh, been talked uh, about anywhere else. That is the first I have heard of it, but I'm happy to look into it. Thank you. Can you? Is there an issue? Can you assign? Can you write an issue and assign it to me? Uh, I can write an issue, but uh, you already have. Um, the tests that are failing, but I'll, I'll make an issue and uh, send it to you. Cool. Nice. I saw those tests were failing, um, but I didn't get a chance to look into it yet today. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, go on, Stephen. I, so, uh, by default, I believe GoIP has switched to recursive resolving. Uh, there was an issue about this at one point um, that may be related. So just take a look at that. Uh, something uh, related, I like. We talk, I talked with Alan about this, but I, I, I'm not sure it may be related. Is that uh, we've added tests for ENS re, uh, resolver uh, for that ETH uh, in JSAPFS and to the interop. Uh, and they were migrating to permanent infrastructure and they shut down the old one. So for a half a day, our CI went down uh, due to that. But I don't think it's, I just looked at uh, the test and it's not the same thing. So it's not, it's uh, different. Yeah, actually, look at the test. It's getting bad JSON back. So this is weird. Yep. Bad JSON. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, that's the, so this could be that the gateways have switched to using a new version of Go IPFS just now and, or not just now, it would have been, uh, when did I see this failing? Maybe Friday, fr Saturday, maybe? Late Friday? Or Friday in the US? Maybe? Does that ring any bells? 
Okay. Um, uh, all right. So anyway, questions. Is there any questions? We're running out of time really rapidly. No. Okay. Parking lot. Okay. Next steps for Lido asks, uh, what are the next steps for DHT and Chase HyperFest? There is a pull request adding the DHT. There is a list. Uh, I will link to that pull request and put it in, in this document, but there is a list of things that need to happen for us to merge it. Um, and what I'm thinking is likely right now is we should just add it in DHT client mode um, and by default uh, uh, and leave it at that. We don't have the ability to know when we're behind than that. So I'm hesitant to add it as not client mode, uh, but there are other things that are in the way before that can happen. I did list it as one of the things potentially for the 038 release. Um, and that's one of the things that I would like input on from people if they're interested. There is an, a 038 release issue. I linked to it somewhere in this document already. Um, just go to the issues thing on um, JSIBFS. It's pinned at the top. Um, if you really want it, then maybe plus one it. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, and then, ah, right, the weekly updates, and that's it. So we are done. We are finished. And it is six o'clock. So we're right on time. Thank you, everyone. Brilliant work. <laughs> uh, any last minute things you want to voice say? All right. Cool. Thank you very much, everyone, for your updates and, uh, and interactions. I've enjoyed seeing your faces, and I uh, look forward to seeing them again soon. Uh, happy uh, Monday, and have a lovely week ITFSing wherever you are.